okay <clears throat> um, there is a phenomenon that I came to know about just recently and I got really intensely interested in it and um, it's called oncogene addiction and um, I knew about this um, from a paper about uh, the evolution of cancer or the evolutionary view of cancer um, but it didn't explain it quite fully so these are the papers that I used um, to know about this phenomenon and these are the papers from which I'm gonna just review really quickly uh, if you're interested you can go back to them okay so what is oncogene addiction oncogene addiction is refers to the fact that some tumor cells uh, become literally addicted to the genes that have caused them to become cancerous in the first place and this is really strange because you would expect that if you have a tumor cell um, that it would yes it would like to have an oncogene yes an oncogene gives it stability and everything but to be addicted to it and to be only able to live and proliferate in the existence of a of an oncogene is a very peculiar phenomenon because in normal cells those oncogenes are not all that important um, so it's very very strange how can a cell a cancer cell literally be dependent on its life and death only on an oncogene almost like everything else in the cell doesn't really matter even the genes involved in other metabolic pathways and everything as if those really don't matter at all and it's only the oncogene that matters the most so um, I'll go into a little bit uh, more detail into that um, but before that you could, you've already seen this paper there's another paper that I used just a second here it is um, this other paper um, by Bernard sorry by Bernard Weinstein and Andrew Joe okay in case you're interested in reading the paper so here I uh, will try to give a, a couple of theories about how this works okay um, there are many many theories uh, one of which is called the uh, the oncogenic shock theory and it's also the one that is probably most supported and the theory says uh, that in normal cells as you can see in this graph in normal cells there are pro growth signals such those those ones that I'm pointing at are pro growth they mediate the survival of the cell and there are pro apoptotic signal that mediate the death of the cell upon activation of an oncogene what happens is oddly enough of course is that all the other pathways are marginalized they're not used anymore and why is that and the reason is very simple if you have a tumor cell and it's dividing really 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 quickly it's acquiring so many different mutations um, that it actually loses some of the important pathways and becomes more dependent on others and of course the pathway that is most active in a tumor cell by definition is the oncogenic pathway and one of the strange things is that this is the case because you would expect that tumor cells they have this sort of natural selection between them they compete for resources they compete for for being close to blood supply they compete for a lot of things so for a tumor cell to lose you know all those you see those solid arrows becoming um, sort of really fading away all of those pathways whether pro apoptotic or pro survival becoming almost atrophied this indicates that 
oncogenes have such a strong selective pressure for tumor cells by making them divide really rapidly that um, they they confer such a strong advantage that it doesn't really matter if the tumor cell loses even the most important um, metabolic pathways required for its survival or death and oddly enough the oncogene is actually involved in both the apoptotic signals as seen by the thick red arrow as well as the survival signal so it's almost like the oncogene mediates both the survival and the death of the tumor cells and if this seems odd enough to you um, I can make it simpler by saying well always remember that everything in the cell is sort of like a circuit okay and whatever it is that acts as an oncogene eventually in normal cells it was a an apoptotic signal and a lot of in a lot of cases if you have of course I'm talking about normal cells if you have a certain oncogene being overexpressed then of course this will be one of the triggers for apoptosis for the cell to avoid becoming cancerous but if it's already a cancerous cell then this means that the oncogene is overactivated so this means that the apoptotic pathway is also overactivated yet at the same time the survival pathway is overactivated and you get sort of like a balance between the two but obviously because this is a cancer cell the survival pathway and the dividing of the tumor cells is much favored so this is the case of oncogene activate um, oncogene um, addiction let's just look at this area first um, there's another case called tumor suppressor hypersensitivity which is based on the same principle um, that is to say tumor cells being addicted to not having tumor suppressor genes um, which is really weird and um, is, is called tumor suppressor hypersensitivity and it's based on the same principle okay so why is this important why why the hell do we even care about knowing whether a tumor cell is addicted or not well of course first of all it's really really interesting and the second thing is that uh, there are um, it's, it's very important nowadays to look for new ways to treat cancer and one of those new ways is called the oncogenic shock therapy and this is this relies on the fact is you would say well if the tumor cell is really really dependent on that gene then we can just do a gene knockout we can use a certain chemotherapeutic technique to get rid of that metabolic pathway for example an inhibitor of that oncogene and then the tumor cell would die and this is the case by the way for a lot of the already existing chemotherapeutic agents uh, that they didn't really know how it works okay uh, so what happens is you have an acute oncogene inactivation and when the oncogene is acutely inactivated somehow the pro survival signals are much overcome by the pro death signal and the tumor cells undergo rapid apoptosis okay they either go rapid apoptosis or they enter into a proliferative arrest or um, they, they become senescent they go into a state of senescence and terminal differentiation whatever it is the tumor cells are just killed okay so this realm of chemotherapy now uh, is to before giving agents that kill both tumor cells and normal cells you can make use of this really nice technique in which you give an acute you know a very very high dose um, of those oncogene inactivating uh, ch chemicals to get rid of most of tumor cells and then add a little bit of chemotherapeutic agents to get rid of normal uh, that that would normally damage even normal beside oncogenic cells to get rid of any cells that didn't die in that is almost like a double blow to the head okay so this is a very uh, new technique in therapy which is uh, under intense research actually and uh, I just found it really really interesting and um, 
one of the things that uh, people think about when referring to oncogene addiction is the whole point of resistance okay and this is why I said it's, it's better to do the so-called double blow to the head technique technique and the technique relies on just a second here we go okay it relies on that you have a heterogeneity within any tumor cell population as I will say in another video that talks about t cancer from an evolutionary point of view you have a lot of heterogeneity think of it almost like bacteria having resistance uh, certain strains because of certain uh, useful mutations and then when you give the on acute oncogenic inactivation all those blue cells would die and the yellow resistance one would persist and if you leave it this way they're gonna grow some more and you're gonna have more resistant mutants almost like the emergence of drug resistance strains all right so this is why the double hit technique is the one that is suggested in which you kill all those blue cells by the acute oncogenic shock and then you give uh, traditional really destructive chemotherapeutic agents um, that are destructive to even normal cells to kill those resistant mutants and this is an optimal case where you don't which is not all that invasive and not all that damaging and at the same time it is um, very uh, harmful to the tumor and obviously very helpful to the patient thank you for listening